we're going to be a complete supporter of your businesses. Now, they have policies in place that make business very, very, very appealing. I would say more so than Dubai or Singapore, but they just haven't marketed it. Marketing. And that's, that is the biggest thing. The, um, Dubai was supposed to go bankrupt in the year 2000. There's a lot of Africans who have concerns, like in Kenya, for example. Uh, the Kenya shilling was exchanging to the dollar for right. 100 shillings slightly over three years ago. Right now, it's over 150 shillings. You know, like that's more than... Uh, that's more than 50%, you know, like loss in value. Uh, so people are concerned. You know, like if I go, if I open up a business in Kenya, you know, I use my dollars here, I open up a business in Kenya, I'm earning in Kenyan shillings. Uh, am I going to be in a situation where I'm losing money? Because I'm sure, you know, also Ghana has also experienced, you know, like some issues with inflation. Yeah, with the CD. Yeah. yeah. yeah so not, how do you deal with that? No, absolutely. It depends on the structure of the business. Okay, so if... If you're earning in a country and spending in a country, there's really no risk because the inflation can be margined for just by holding on to fixed assets. So, for instance, if you have real estate, if the value of the local currency was to go down, your value is going to go up. A country that, that dealt with this um, very much recently was Turkey, of all things, where they dealt with actually the most extreme inflation for a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as if you're investing, now where the nuance would come in is if you are trying to earn in Kenya or you're trying to earn in Ghana and then take that money out, out through a service and then spend it in the Western world, that's the tricky part where if you write contracts the wrong way, and this is with any, it works any way around. It, this would work, for, this is a concern if you're doing business in America and London, if you're doing business in London and China. These are always concerns. Uh, there are derivative markets. There's ways that are basically we have connections with uh, financial organizations that basically can guarantee an exchange rate for you. It's it's not free. They charge commission for that. But a series of derivatives, they can secure your business. But that is bespoke to every single business. However, if you are buying physical assets, generally you're quite safe because it's physical assets are held to a global market. So if you have gold, if you have if you have timber, if you're in minerals. It just depends on how your contract is written. It's one of those things where it's like, if we really dig into this, it's like, let's make this a five-hour show because, <laughs> it, because it's a super technical question. Yeah. But yes, it absolutely can be taken care of. No problem whatsoever. Uh, our company is margined against any sudden um, depreciation in currency. It doesn't mean that we are expecting that to happen, but we do always maintain a certain degree of insurance against that. Oh wow! So so there's a huh. there's a business strategy to, to oh, actually deal oh, with absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely! It's it's not it's not terribly complicated. It just needs to be just like a just like a shirt. It just needs to be tailor made to the individual. As long as we tailor make that solution, it's it's not terribly difficult. Okay. All right. And and then you know like you've also talked about uh, you've extensively talked about you know like um, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, and you feel that AI will like, benefit Africa. More than the U.S., absolutely. More than Europe and more than China, absolutely. How is that? It levels the playing field. See, see, when when artificial intelligence is handling the value added chain, and when it's handling the the management of a business in a great capacity, uh, your generational knowledge of business doesn't matter anymore. It just matters what proximity you have to natural resources and what access you have to the necessary labor pool to work alongside that artificial intelligence. Uh, Europe is not completely without mineral resources, but it's at a vastly inferior position uh, to Africa right now. And in terms of demographic growth, uh, the uh, people of Europe have decided that reproduction is not part of their life plans in the same way. They just don't have families. So they're not going to have population. They're not right? having babies. They're just not. They're, yeah. they're choosing consumerism. They're choosing... Um, Enjoying life. Yeah. They're, they're ch and there's other cultural reasons for that, but... Um, but ultimately, as we see technology advance, the we have to look at the points of differentiation. Because when AI is running things, it doesn't matter whether you're Chinese, American, African, South America, it doesn't matter. The AI is going to work exactly the same regardless of where you're from. So the, what matters is 
what are your resources? What are the differentiation points? And then the big one is going to be natural resources, access to uranium, lithium, uh, access to timber, access to solar energy, right? Big thing. So these are these are these are areas where I believe where we take the institutional knowledge off the shelf and we just look at the comparative advantages, it's eventually going to shift the economic outcomes into Africa's favor as long as they maintain autonomy. Now, if they work out trade deals where they just continue to give their resources out, mm -hmm. no, it won't benefit Africa at all. It, if Africa just gives their resources to the West, no, it doesn't matter what happens with AI. They're always going to end up falling behind. But if they keep the resources within their borders, value add there, and then they implement AI to optimize that value added chain, yeah, they're going to blow up economically. And there's really nothing anyone can do about it. Wow. You know, <laughs> Washeke here says it's interesting to see an outsider like Brad see the opportunities that we don't see. Um, Kaiser Soze. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> they are. Afro, Afro Jamaican. Afro Jamaican. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Afro -Jamaican. They, they, folks from outside will see things. It's just the same way as when we go back home, what we end up seeing in terms just by having the exposure of having lived out here and then you mm -hmm. take yourself back home when i say back home forget the town the village okay like i come from an island that in of itself if you're gonna do any comparisons with say any vacation spots that we go to in florida um that we go to in jamaica bahamas blah 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 the minute i hit the island it's fresh water and has beaches and there's no, you know, uh, stingrays, there's no jellyfish, none of that stuff. You, you you start thinking, hey, I could turn this into a small little, you know, I could put a little boardwalk over here, make this mm -hmm. happen, blah, blah, blah. Have guys come and sit and fish, you know, and then go have a guy sitting with a frying pan and, you know, fry the fish for them and charge you, you, you know. So there's things that you think of just because you have been exposed. But without that exposure, you don't get to see it. So, yeah, and it's our outsider will see more than we see. Be you know, it goes back to your analogy of uh, giving a child food. What is it? If you don't expose a child to anything but fufu, that's yeah. all they know. That's all they know. Right? Yeah, and nothing else. So, if you start giving them rice, they're like, oh, you mean there's actually an alternate thing you can eat? You know? So, yeah. Okay. And, and, and what about, you know, like also, you know, just Americans who are looking for investment opportunities? maybe right now is when mines are opening up a bit to africa mm -hmm. what why is it that uh you always hear people talk of dubai people talk of uh you know like singapore you know like some of these exotic places that everyone else is talking about what is it that uh that has still blinded people to what kind of potential that for example that you're seeing yeah i mean well dubai and singapore were both excellent countries at marketing themselves remember what they what they led with was, we're not going to tax you if you bring your business here. Now, in West Africa, there's not been any any uh, country that has gone through and said, we're going to be a complete supporter of your businesses. Now, they have policies in place that make business very, very, very appealing. I would say more so than Dubai or Singapore, but they just haven't marketed it. Marketing. And that is that is the biggest thing. The... Um, Dubai was supposed to go bankrupt in the year 2000. Dubai ran out. Dubai was the stereotype of Dubai in the 90s was these are just a bunch of rich sheiks who got a bunch of oil because they're lucky. They won the lottery in terms of where they were located and they're going to spend all of their money on frivolous things and then they're going to go back to being a poor area. But the leaders of Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, were absolutely forward thinking. I think some of those genius people of all time because. They marketed themselves. They made sure that they subsidized the biggest skyscrapers. They made sure everyone knew that this was going to be the place to, to do be. business. Yeah. And they it, remember Dubai and Singapore both had one, two, uh, another thing in common was they had an iron fist on anybody who would cause crime or disharmony in those areas. Yes. You can if you you're not allowed to chew gum in Singapore. You can walk around in, in white socks in Dubai and your feet will stay white. <laughs> you know, they, they keep their stuff so clean. And they had a very focused mission. Um, geographically, Africa's in a better position. Uh, in terms of potential, Africa's in a far better position. At, Dubai has no more, Dubai is entirely a financial organization at this point. Same as Singapore. They don't have resources. Singapore 
imports, I think, 70% of their food. If they lost trade, they're dead. I mean, they're, they're in a really bad spot. If you think about it from a strategic <clears throat> standpoint, as long as things stay stable, they'll be okay. But Africa can really go to the next level. I don't know who, which country and which city is going to say, hey, we're going to make a focused mission to be the next Dubai. I think Rwanda is trying to do that. Not mm-hmm. necessarily next Dubai, but they're really trying to attract businesses. They international are. businesses. Oh, yes. Yeah. But no, not necessarily create uh, another Dubai, but but they've really done a good job based on where they were in the 90s after the genocide and where they are today. So oh, yeah. Rwanda is trying to do oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah, night and day. They, they, they have an NBA-ready arena mm-hmm. in... Uh, in Rwanda, and I think yep, the first it. NBA game <coughs> in the first NBA game in Africa is probably going to happen in Rwanda. there. Yeah, yep. it's probably yeah. going to happen there. 